Good morning, ma'am. Shall we start with the program? Yes. Yeah. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The galaxy of intellectuals, your excellency, invited guests, teachers, and my dear friends. On behalf of G10 Institution, I, Krishna Sonone, head Department of Forensic Science, convener and host for today's webinar, welcomes you in the second day of international webinar series on the fo forensic science for society. Friends, how different is this days? Lockdown by the situation, and we are connected together by the webinar to make the best use of this time during this lockdown and gain the knowledge. I thank you, all of you, for joining this webinar, focusing on the topic Forensic 2050, the SpaceX Moments of Forensic Science. We feel honored to have with us Ms. Shraddha Nyatima, Forensic Scientist, Advisor, Allen CSI, Cleveland, Ohio, Editor, International Journal of Applied Biology and Forensics, author from Ring to Mirror, conceptualization artist, book reviewer, Harrison, New Jersey, USA, from United States of America. The speakers of today's webinar. Ma'am, you hardly need any introduction. You have made all of us proud by your distinguished work in the field of forensic science. Ma'am did her master's in forensic science with the specialization in forensic biology, serology, and DNA. She was the silver medalist of her university. She had worked as a head of department of forensic science at Government Institute of Forensic Science, Aurangabad, Maharashtra, India. She has handled cases of theft, murder, forged signature, suicide, notes, homicides, suicides, and accidental death in association with the local police. She has also trained several cadres of police department for proper investigation of crime scene. She was also nominated for Best Scientist Award at International Science Congress, Udaipur, India. She also conducts several self-placed online training courses. She is also training in gemstone analysis. She is a published author. Her book, From Ring to Mirror, was published in 2015. Her next book is under the publication as we speak. In her free time, you will find her wrapped in a blanket, either reading or painting. She is currently working part time as an advisor at Allen CSI in Cleveland, Ohio, and the editor of International Journal of Applied Biology and Forensics. I request everyone, please ask your doubts by typing the message on the screen at the end of the session and not in the middle of the session. Hope you will gain the knowledge and enjoy this session. So without any delay, I request the ma'am to start with the session. Thank you, Krishna. Like I, I would request you all not to be impressed by such a long description. I mean, I'm pretty sure had there been someone from FBI or Roth, they wouldn't require such a huge description. But anyway, thank you, Krishna, for making me look good in front of everyone. So now, before we begin this webinar, I would like you guys to answer me something. You guys can uh, type it in the chat box. I'll be looking at the answers. Um, how many of you believe that in future, sometime in future, there would be flying cars? Please uh, like type down in the chats. Are there any people here who believe that there would be flying cars in the future? Believe, believe, believe. I am, I am, I am. Okay. So exactly. So that is what we are going to discuss today. Not the flying cars or anything. But most of us, we believe that in future, the sky would not be just about clouds, right? There could be a lot of things as we are talking. There could be flying cars. So today we are going to discuss about the SpaceX moments. That's the title of our webinar. So for people who do not know about SpaceX, like why I titled this webinar as SpaceX. Um, so this is an aerospace company by Elon Musk. He recently launched a, a, a rocket called Falcon 9. And he is claiming that in coming years, he would be opening 
a space tourism kind of thing so you guys would be able to go to space i have no idea what you look uh, uh, what you will see in space since it's all dark but there would be something like none of us have been there so we cannot even say but he is saying that in future the space tourism would be a boom he is designing a rocket in which like there'll be eight people or so and he'll take us around space for let's say 30 minutes and the best part is everyone gets to have the window seat so that is what the future looks like and that is what we are going to talk today so i welcome you all to the future of forensic science wait let me just share the screen okay so uh, i'm going to show you some picture uh, images right now oh by the way i will ask you questions you will have to reply in the chat box like i had to get up really early in the morning for this webinar and i'm not letting you guys sleep on me so i'll keep asking questions you will keep answering me so that it's a interactive kind of webinar cool so now i'm going to show you some images these images were painted in somewhere around 1900s so people were asked like what do you imagine the future to be they asked what 2000 would look like to people in 1900s so let me uh, show you these images type it in the chat boxes what do you think is the corresponding technology which is prevalent today okay oh i don't know how to yeah how do i go to chat ah oh, cool yes so i would like answers from you guys what does this image look like in the present day movie be a little creative you guys need to type else i'll not be able to move ahead video call perfect so this image somehow you can relate it to a movie that is being shown or to a video conference live show correct so just imagine in 1900s that is what people expected the future to be yes we do have better video calls and 3d projection projections that's okay but this is what they thought it would be like okay next this one Oh, we have moved to the next slide. Perfect. It looks like a vacuum cleaner. Correct. This. Perfect. Aeroplane. Next. This is the best. I I like this the best. robots doing the work like be creative be a little creative dj <laughs> torture room come on guys give me something good music theater okay let's not online classes smart classes okay so can you see this man here who is dumping books in this whatever thing this is okay i got the answers okay so now look at this man he is dumping the books in this thing and here this person is actually rotating something and it is coming here through these headphones this is like audio book yes perfect deep shri dhande that is an audio book so now just imagine what people used to think in 1900s yeah look at this so basically this is about the security features right and this in the first nokia phone there was absolutely no security feature your mom your dad they could easily open up your phone they could check the messages they could check everything they wanted right it was scary the next one is the touch uh, where you have to enter the pass codes this is also still okay like usually people are able to figure out what pass codes you might enter then we moved on to these 
where you have to uh, have a pattern then we moved on to the fingerprint sensors and now finally we have moved on to our face recognition right so this is how the development is happening nowadays so in this presentation since it's a weekend i do not like to spoil weekends at all so we'll have fun there'll be nothing technical in this webinar we'll not be talking about the color test for drugs or explosives gas chromatography mass spectrometry nothing we'll just be teleporting our minds to the future we will think what would happen in the future okay so let's have some fun let's make this weekend a bit better one cool now the first thing in forensic science that is important is post mortem interval as of now for people who do not know what is post mortem interval it is basically the time since death how long it has been since someone died okay as of now we identify post mortem interval based on several physiological changes that take place in the body right algor mortis rigor mortis hypostasis putrefaction um i think there are people who are from non forensic background so for those people do not be worried about such weird terms in the layman language these are just the changes that take place in the body like everybody like you know a body cools down after someone dies so you can analyze how long a person has been dead based on these physiological indicators then eventually because these things are like pretty variable you know they are dependent on the clothing of a person on the environment of the bot uh, where the body died whether it was inside or it was outside so there are so many things that actually determine the post mortem interval that affect the analysis of post mortem interval so then we moved to entomology right we identify how the flies they colonize a dead body we study their life cycle and that is how we come to know the post mortem interval but now we are moving a little ahead so now we are doing microbial clocks so sim simply like the way we understand entomological evidences it has been claimed that in future we will be able to identify the post mortem interval based on microbial decomposers it is said that after a body dies even the microbes they act on this body at particular interval you would be able to isolate the microbial organisms and you will be able to relate to a particular time so let's say this is that chart so let's say if you find a pseudomonas proteobacteria you would be able to easily say that a body has been dead recently there hasn't been long that the body died so if you are able to isolate microorganisms you can easily say how long a body has been dead but the problem with this is does the microbial effect on the dead body is affected by season like will there be a change whether it is spring whether it's summer or winters again has the body been moved it also depends like just in the case of entomological evidences when you shift a body the entomological evidences change and that is how you identify how whether a body has been moved to a second relocation right now also the location of body like whether you found the body in water or was it in soil because there are microbes in the soil as well so they would also interact with the body so when all these things combine together when you study these things you will be able to identify the post mortem interval the presence of certain microbes in what area of the body those micro microbes are present what is the concentration of those microbes so that is how it's going to be in the future next is thanato transcriptomics please do not be scared by such a long name it simply means after we die all of us we think like after the cellular death somatic death everything ceases to work in our body but there are certain genes that actually increase their expression once a person dies i also did not know about the, about this i was reading through certain literature and then i got to know that there are some genes 
that become active after a person dies these are the genes that were present when we you know when the the fetal development so these genes activate themselves and if we study the expression of genes in particular tissues you will be able to identify the time since death so let's say if you are able to see this graph can you see the boxes that are present so now let's say there is this gene ifng that is what you have isolated from lung the first box that you see so if you are able to understand the expression of this gene and the expression is between 0.5 to 1 you can easily say that it has been almost two and a half hours that the body has been dead so based on the expression of certain genes in certain tissues the amount of expression you can easily identify the uh, the time that has passed since death again the question in this is does the expression of these genes change with the cause of death like if there was a drug overdose does that affect these gene expressions or if it was a natural death the expression of these genes change so this is what we need to study and we need to have a proper data to use this technique now next is human microbiome this is pretty interesting um so all of us have as of now the research that is already being conducted it is on the microbiome from pubic hairs or scalp hair and it is being used in sexual assault cases so okay uh, i would just like to tell you guys one thing the techniques that i have mentioned in this presentation some of them are already under research but they are not yet full proof they are not yet available to the public some of the techniques are far ahead in the future so let's keep our minds open about it so for microbiome in cases of sexual assaults when you are not able to find dna when you do not know how to uh, identify the perpetrators in such cases you can actually have a microbial uh, you can have a microbiome that you can isolate from either the pubic hairs or scalp hair so when you have uh, se sexual assault cases and you are not able to find the dna and you have absolutely nothing else to go forward it has been said that every person has its own individual microbial flora and fauna so in these cases if you can isolate that microbial diversity you will be able to characterize a particular perpetrator so in cases let's say there are two there is a couple who stays together even they have their own individual microbiome but if you try to isolate the microbiome of them you will be able to find some overlapping between the between the two which will show that they had some intercourse in the given period of time and that is how you are able to use it in sexual assault cases also the researchers are claiming that in coming time everywhere we move we leave a microbial signatures of us so if you are able to scan that it is possible that rather than depending on fingerprints or dna or anything like that your microbiome would be enough to identify you because a microbiome you know is uh, dependent on the kind of lifestyle you have it is dependent on what you eat the kind of metabolism the location you are at so all these things help you to characterize a particular microbiome and you have your own individual microbiome that, that can help the researchers to identify one particular person isn't it scary the next is dna from maggots in a burnt body so in cases where you are not able to find dna or odontological evidences it is possible that maggots when they feed on the dead body you can isolate the dna of the dead individual and you can easily relate it you can easily go for dna genotyping and you can identify that person now next this is one of the uh, you know carry techniques this is dna phenotyping as of now what we are doing is dna genotyping right what we do is 
we have certain markers we go for gene sequencing and then you have a complete profile that you match with someone but what happens in cases when the uh, when the body that you find is unidentified what happens when there is absolutely no one to match your profile with in such cases dna phenotyping comes into play so the researchers have isolated some markers this is the name of the system they have isolated six dna markers that can identify blue or brown eyes eventually they worked over their system then they were able to identify the hair color and skin color and now they can even identify the sex and height so what is happening is just by your dna rather than going through the effort of gene sequencing or typing the dna they are creating a face right now the face that they create is pretty average they will not pinpoint to one particular person but in coming times it is being claimed that just by a single drop the researchers will be able to create your entire face so that they can you know uh, once they have the face they can spread it in the media and they'll be able to identify who the person is so this is how it happens this is from an australian research lab this person is just taking a swab next they insert it in, into the source of that particular machine you just click on sequence this is the result that you get so can you see the red dot uh, in between the purple dots so basically this is the ancestry results the different colored dots represent different ancestries the purple dot represent maybe european ancestry and since the red dot that means the person who has volunteered for dna phenotyping he falls in this purple uh, dot area that means he is of european ancestry it's hardly a matter of 2 hours or 3 hours you get the result quickly then it also gives you hair color results like just imagine it is so easy it's giving you everything you do not even have to interpret those different uh, graphs that you get when you go for str analysis it's telling you directly that this is the probability of the hair color results so see it's 65% brown there is absolutely no chance of being red then it could be black so that's what i'm saying so as of now it's a very average field but people are the researchers are still working on it and they are going to actually make sure that in coming time you will actually have a face that everyone can identify similarly in the right hand side if you are able to see the color of the eyes so even that is possible and this is the final result that comes you have a snapshot profile so can you see the difference between the two like the original photo and the profile that is generated so that is why as of now you cannot rely on this field but in future there is a high chance that it's going to become really flawless and you will get a perfect face from just a single drop of blood now next is fingerprints um personally i do not know why we study fingerprints because you know if if the criminal is really smart he should know to wear you know gloves that's the basic thing if you are becoming a criminal you should know that the first thing that you do is wear gloves but anyway we will study fingerprints so as of now there are a couple of techniques that can easily isolate fingerprints lift fingerprints analyze fingerprints but the most important thing that still is missing is age of fingerprints age of fingerprints simply means how long a fingerprint has been deposited on a particular surface okay so let's say for example there is um a uh, a lady died in her apartment okay through cctv footage the police is able to say that there was a person who had ent entered the apartment let's say one day before and after that there has been absolutely no one who came in or went outside his uh, the the lady's body was found out after let's say a day okay now when the research, uh, when the police man analyze the crime scene they found fingerprints of this guy who came one day before okay 
he has a very good alibi but still the police suspects because there was absolutely no one who came in so he's already under suspect but if you can study the fingerprints you will be able to say that it has been so and so time that the fingerprints were deposited like the last fingerprint that was deposited was let's say 12 hours or 13 hours back and the death took place just recently so that is why it is very important to understand how long a fingerprint has been there at a particular location so there are several uh, molecules or metabolites that are deposited right as you know the fingerprints they are because of a sweat which contains lot of metabolites one of them is palmitic acid that is the current molecule that is under research so it has been said that it diffuses like from the ridges of fingerprints it diffuses down so if you can study the rate of that diffusion the amount of palmitic acid that has been diffused you will be able to identify how long a fingerprint has been deposited on a particular surface as of now the researchers have uh, just studied single fingerprints like there are no two or three overlapping fingerprints to interfere and they have only studied it on silicon surfaces so we need to work on different surfaces like let's say is there a difference in the diffusion rates if the surface is metallic or if the surface is plastic so these are the things that we need to work on the next is fingerprint detection devices this is pretty good because the the this technology that is written here lumidi multi spectral sensing technology it basically identifies and lifts the fingerprint but it also helps you to understand the surface on which the fingerprint is deposited that is how this works so for all those students who used to think you know when you uh, place al uh, fevicol on your fingers you remove it and then you can use it for biometrics since your fingerprints are there so this is where this technique will be used you cannot use that because this technique will be able to help us to know that the fingerprint is not present on skin it is on a completely different surface now we can extend this study to another dimension like in explosion cases if you have explosive residues that are present along with fingerprints this will help us to know what kind of explosive explosive residues are present without actually disturbing the fingerprint similarly as we discussed like we have several metabolites that come out uh, with a sweat so just if it's possible like just with exposing the fingerprint to some technology like let's say this technology you will be able to identify the metabolites that are coming out of your body in the form of sweat so in future will there be a possibility that these chemicals become a signature of a particular person because again it all depends on what you are eating what is your lifestyle so there is a possibility that these can serve as an individualization feature for you people next is laser scanning so in this technique what happens is it's basically based on laser ablation laser ablation is nothing basically when you expose a surface or a fingerprint to a particular scanner what happens is the wavelength is such that it absorbs all the moisture it affects the vibrations between hydrogen and oxygen bonds of water so everything else goes away so it this device it has several filters okay and when you suck the fin uh, the fingerprint using a small vacuum pump the dna will be available in one filter the metabolites can be taken out from the other filter so this could be the level of sophistication like rather than working out uh like putting in efforts to actually isolate dna or to work on the metabolites if there is a scanner that can actually have several filters which can you know isolate the metabolites that are present metabolites in a different filter dna in a different filter and the entire fingerprint in a completely different level so it would be so easy you'll be able to understand you'll be able to study all these different things individually making our work pretty easy then microbial studies uh, as we discussed like all of us we have different microbial flora similarly 
when we have we, when we deposit fingerprints on a surface along with the fingerprints our microbial flora and fauna is also deposited so if we know how to type these microbial organisms we can easily individualize a person and again for meat or vegetable eater like as i told you the metabolites that are secreted in our cell uh, in our sweat they can easily help the researchers to identify what kind of person it uh, he is you know he can be a meat eater or a vegetable eater or a vegan so this can help us to narrow down the list of suspects okay so can you guys tell me what this looks like sorry yeah Uh, how do I see the chat? Yeah, post mortem, perfect. So, as of now, like it's very difficult to you know uh, perform autopsies, right? Because there are several cultural issues when we cut up a dead body. Like dead body is considered to be really sacred in almost all the cultures, and also like if you perform an autopsy, you go for post mortem. after certain time you do not have the evidences left with you and there has been so many cases where the evidences turn up pretty late you cannot say you know that you did not take any uh, post mortem sample or we do not have the body now we cannot perform the analysis right so now what is being done is people are going for virtual autopsies so this was the project that was started by university of zurich they started with word autopsy that is virtual autopsy so it's very easy you know the dead body just passes through a ct scanner and or an mri machine this machine scans your entire body in 3d everything that your body has your muscles your nerves your bones every single peculiar peculiarity is being monitored it is being scanned and it is converted into a digital form so this is how it looks uh, so this body is not original as you can see this is just for simulation purpose it's going through that white hole that is the whole scanner there are several cameras and this is how uh, you can actually view the body in real time so it becomes really easy you know if you have to study some pathological changes that are happening in your body rather than cutting it through cutting through the body you can just look at this image many times if you find a uh, let's say decomposing bodies putrefaction is there it becomes really difficult to uh, you know visualize if there were some wounds if there were some injuries so it becomes so easy when you have a digital format like this you can easily zoom in and check for any fractures that are available so this is how uh, as of now we understand the trajectory of bullets like we have probes so if you think that this is the trajectory you and uh, you insert a probe and you check for the direction of that bullet but in such cases it's very difficult you know if uh, the bullet ricocheted or like it went some other direction but if you have virtual autopsies it becomes so easy to identify the direction the bullet traveled whether it caused fragmentation of the bullet even if there are some wounds it becomes so easy to identify the kind of wounds that are there in the body like in this image there is a wound here on the skull the size of this wound can also be identified without worrying about anything else you can identify what is the size of this wound you can match it with some weapon used that could be used let's say a knife so rather than actually inserting that knife in this wound you can without affecting the body you can actually do all these calculations and on the top you can see like you have options whether you want to view the full body you want to view just the skull or you want to view the rib cage so you can have several filters then on the left you can see external or skeleton so it moves like if you want to see just the outer projection or you want to go inside look at the veins the muscles the tissues what is the damage that is being done and the best part is since everything is in the digitalized form it becomes so easy to share all these things with other researchers or other investigators 
so many times especially in our country in india the uh, forensic lab is not comprised of everyone like we have to use a forensic pathologist to understand the injuries that might have taken place we need someone from physics background to understand the about the bullet trajectories so rather than you know um, collecting the evidences and sending to all the different people we can just share these autopsy results they can give their opinions so it's it becomes really easy to communicate with even different investigators now comes the very important part crime scene investigations now you guys tell me what do you think should be the development in investigations so that it becomes easy for all of us what do you think just imagine in your head like if we are 30 years down the lane what do you think would be the developments in crime scene investigations drones perfect we'll be covering that okay don't say anything that's already present in this list yes i need answers web camera crime scene preventions okay what else cctv drones so okay the biggest problem that we have okay google maps scene scanners artificial intelligence now you guys are talking cool geolocations quality professional okay psychopath what do you mean by psychopath evidence prevention portable kits fast test like strips perfect okay so you get the idea so now robots all right good so the biggest problem that we have as of now in crime scene investigation is like we take so much time in management of that crime scene that many a times the ev evidences lose their value so how good it would be like rather than going through all the pain of collecting those evidences you can just have crime scene portable kits you know like you can just take those little bags there are some kits in it you just take those little kits to the crime scene and you can perform your analysis right there without worrying about the collection of evidences so let's say for example there are hand held electronic sniffers which can directly detect drugs you do not have to go through all those color tests that we do for identification of drugs you can just you know uh, ask someone to breathe out in an electronic sniffer and you can directly get the answer that this is the kind of drug that the person has consumed it would be so easy similarly what if we have flashlight detectors like they can replace the breathalyzers or a person who is under uh, driving under the influence of alcohol so now if you guys if any of you have drunk and drive at night especially in delhi so if a, po a, a police constable stops you if you guys have drunk and drive there is a possibility that you can easily dodge that police person right they do not take the uh, they do not have they do not go through the effort of actually following you they just let you be if i know get go okay but if we have flashlight detectors even if you dodge a particular police man they will be able to detect it with just a flashlight that can be mounted on a pole or something and they can alert the next signal so at the even if you dodge at one particular signal the police would be able to catch at the next signal so that is the kind of development that could happen then next is microfluidic chips for dna these are being used now and they are used they are being used at quite a lot of places so what happens i'll give you a very brief idea because this is a very interesting technique if anyone wants to learn about this you can contact me separately we cannot cover the entire thing here so in a very simple language there is a very little chip you just have to put a drop of blood and within few hours it gives you the answer like it gives you the markers it gives you the entire profile so it becomes really easy like you do not have to go through the pcr technique and everything like it is so much problematic like when i used to perform dna typing it was like you have to make sure there is no contamination then you have to pip it so many different kinds of things you had to incubate like it was such a pain to isolate dna and go for genotyping then you had to make those gels for gel documentation again next level of effort it was 
so how would it be to you know skip this entire thing and just pour a drop of blood on a particular chip and it will give you the answer directly next we have near infrared light scanners so they can image your entire vein structure before we do this it is important to know whether the vein structure of our body is individual so let's say if you have three suspects a cctv camera had recorded the vein structure of a particular person and when you are there in the inter interrogation room this scanner can actually scan the entire vein structure and match it with the one that the cctv camera had captured of the suspect so it becomes really easy you do not have to go through the polygraph test or anything you can just scan the human body you can just scan the vein structure and you can match it now this is a very important technology so in coming slides we'll be discussing with different uh, equipments that we use and every equipment will have a modification of this lidar technology like if we have an equipment that is just used for sensing some odors so this technique can be customized to just sense the smell okay so basically what happens this technology has several filters several lights like uv rays visible rays all the different spectrum and when you expose a particular surface you are able to identify the kind of surface whether it is metallic non metallic the kind of evidence is whether it's blood or are these some explosive some drugs or in cases of uh, fire what kind of accelerant was used so it can directly identify what kind of evidences are present and you can even map the crime scenes so if you use this technology in drones this technology will help to bring the entire crime scene in a digital format then it can also identify faulty construction material i'll uh, show you the image so this is how the lidar technology gives result this is currently like this is the very basic form of it and we are expecting that in future the image would be perfectly the way the individual uh, scene is it would not be in the form of this now this is a building under construction if you are able to see in the top right corner there are, there is a certain blue colored thing right so this technology helps the researchers to understand the faulty materials used in construction so rather than analyzing different samples from different locations in let's say a bridge you can just expose that bridge to this technology and this will give you an entire image with different colors and you can directly know where a faulty material was used so it can save so many lives now the next is that we were talking about uh, is drones like for the identification of graves so the students who have uh, studied anthropology or even the basics and even for those who have not uh, studied for uh, anthropology as of now when you are digging graves it is not just you know uh, excavating stuff it's not just digging a hole it's a very tedious process you have to you know if there is a grave you have to divide it into small small squares then you take out the soil you filter it through meshes and everything that you collect you have to photograph so just imagine in cases where there are mass graves like it would be such an immense effort to actually go through the effort of excavating every single thing so these people look happy it's not at all a happy thing like this you have different uh, areas marked and then you keep filtering the soil that you get so rather than going through these this process manually you can have a drone that has this lidar technology and when you expose it in a particular area it will be able to tell you whether a particular location has some graves or not as of now we have uh, these technologies this is a ground penetrating radar so we are a little developed now so basically you take this machine and you go through an area and can you see the uh, the monitor kind of thing in front of the hand that is where you get the results whether there was something beneath the ground 
but even with these kinds of instruments you have to have a person that will take that instrument around that entire ground like again it's a painstaking effort you need a person these equipments they are not light they are heavy so we need something that will you know that will just make us lazy that's it so what we can have is we can have driverless cars or robots we can just tune them we can send them and they can i with this lidar technology and they can easily identify you do not even have to worry you can connect these robots or cars with a with a software on your screen or on your tab and you can actually view what is there below the ground so it becomes pretty easy to identify graves then is odor sensor so many graves they even uh, release some smell decomposition sets in there is smell that comes out and that is how many a times dogs are able to identify some graves so these cars or these robots can be fitted with lidar technology that is customized for sensing some smells and that is how you can easily identify the graves now we'll go with drones specifically so it becomes easy when you have a huge crime scene let's say there is a disaster that took place how difficult it would be you know when you have to uh, click photographs of the disaster scene like just take an example of a train wreck a train accident how much pictures will you take how many pictures will you take how will you videograph all the the entire crime scene it becomes really difficult and then taking all those videos back to the lab analyzing those things so now what we can do is we can just have drones that can give you an aerial view of the entire crime scene it becomes pretty easy so in traffic accidents it can be used many a times what happens whenever an accident takes place the roads are usually blocked and they remain blocked for a very very long time like the investigators will come they will document the entire crime scene they'll make all the sketches they'll have to connect uh, collect the evidence so it's a very long process sometimes in disasters it can take days so rather than spending or wasting so much time you can actually have drones that can record that can map the entire crime scene and it can bring it back to you now see in this image the drone has captured an accident the image was relayed back on the computer and right there you can actually mark where the car might have turned where the skid marks would be the tire marks would be so it becomes really easy for you to analyze an accident so this is a simulation that took place there is a person who uh, gave an introduction on the app, uh, the software that can be used in drones so this is that application the application itself you can measure the distance between the car and the victim if available so this is how you have a drone it can map the entire crime scene this is a simulation okay this is not a real crime scene so this is how you can collect images you can have different videos they all can be combined together to actually make a 3d model then as you can see you can have a 2d map if you want you can have a 3d model of the entire crime scene too next is plant health and elevation it's very important you know there are some people who say that my car has been parked here since really long like it has been month that have not moved and the truck came and hit me but if you study the plant health if the car was not moved for really long the plants that are present or the grass that is present below the tires would be different as compared to the surrounding area right so you can easily say based on the plant health whether that car was moved or not so you can easily mark like the location there are options for distance the area like you can blur the surrounding area and just focus on the crime that you need to uh, work on see they can mark the distances again the same you can use drones for identification of graves we discussed this already now next this one is like pretty interesting virtual reality i hope you guys know what virtual reality is if you guys have gone to like there are so many malls these days 
they have those virtual reality big big uh, glasses that they make you wear and then they take you through uh, different roller coasters so you are right there standing in the mall you are just wearing that and you get the feeling of being in a roller coaster ride isn't it so in cases of crime scenes how good it would be like especially for students when we tell students like you have to survey the crime scene you have to go through the strip method or the zonal method all those kinds of methods if we actually show you the crime scene you can actually know how you go about the serving of crime scene then we can even have the main person communicating with the people around right it becomes so easy if there is let's say a, a crime that took place and you have to show it to the court so rather than making the jury understand what happened you can have the entire crime scene created and then you can present it in front of the court in the form of virtual reality <coughs> in these cases you can even have a demo how a crime occurred you can show it in the form of a virtual reality video how a crime could have taken place like a person shot from here and this is how the victim got hit one of the most important thing is perspectives now let's say there is a lady who said who was on let's say a fourth floor and he said that i saw one person coming out of this house okay and that person is under suspect if you can create a virtual reality scene then you can easily say that it is not possible for this lady to actually view someone coming out from the house because let's say um there was a tree which was blocking the view so it becomes very important to have perspectives whether a particular witness could have actually seen whether a crime took place or not okay so i'll show you a 2 uh, minutes video it's pretty interesting how virtual reality works let me check if it works yes perfect can you guys see not at now now can you no is it visible not 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 visible mom why yeah, it's visible okay never mind let's uh, skip it because i think we are running out of time right yes still we are having next 20 25 minutes Thank yeah you. let's 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 move ahead okay uh, i'll send you the link i'll uh, share it on the chat okay sure ma'am now this is the most interesting part the augmented reality part I hope all of you know what this is the snapchat filters everybody uses it like you have different kinds of filters that you can use to enhance how you look right so this same thing can also be used in forensic science and in a very interesting manner i'll give you some examples of augmented reality i hope this you all know pokemon go the famous game and i don't know if this having animals in your living area happened in india or not but here in us especially after the lockdown started the parents were like really frustrated because the kids did not know what to do so this was an app that was created where you can actually have animals come right there in your living room through augmented reality so in augmented reality if we use it in forensic science what happens is usually you know whenever there is a crime that takes place the investigators do not go on the crime scene usually the first responding officers are the police people right so it becomes difficult because these people do not really know what are the important evidences so they can actually have a camera that relays back the back the image to the labs and the people in the lab is the important evidence what to collect so here in this image there is this person who is wearing different equipments and this 
image is being relayed back to different research labs or the in uh, investigating labs and these arrows that you are seeing these are being shown by the people who are sitting back in the lab as if you know this is important this is what you have to collect like here so the, you get the different victim suspect you have here the blood marks so basically the crime scene is right there in front of you it's actually present there and these are the things that pop up in front of you like this is what you have to collect like here it's written like you have to inspect blood similarly if you find some bullet you can readily scan it you can send that scan data to the lab there they can perform the matching and right in front of you you will have the answer so like this like if someone sends me on an explosion case to investigate an explosion case now i have never personally handled any explosion cases so i know theoretically what happens but my knowledge as compared to someone who has experience of handling explosion cases would be pretty low so i can easily relay back the entire scene to that particular person and through augmented reality he can actually mark the crime scene in front of me and and tell me the things like here there are gray oxide so you can collect it this is a particular rust so you can collect that it could help in the investigation so that is how we utilize augmented reality now if you have to show a particular trajectory of a bullet you have a real crime scene in front of you through simulations you can actually fire a gun and it will hit a person you can say whether this was actually possible or not it is possible for you to analyze if the bullet fragmented so you can study all these things right there in front of you with respect to the crime scene like you do not have to even imagine a crime scene it's right there in front of you now do you know this guy so this is yoda yoda i think yeah yoda from star wars so this is a hologram so what happens is just imagine if you can create holograms in front of the jury like you can actually depict the entire crime scene it would be like a theatrical performance right you are actually showing a suspect a victim how a particular crime occurred it would be so much easy now 3d scanners these are something which are being utilized as of now but if you use them in a very proper manner they can actually help you to reduce the work very easily so what happens there is an entire crime scene you can just place these scanners and they can scan the entire crime scene in a 3d model so this is the original way how you document a crime scene right you sketch it is a very difficult it's a painstaking effort you are going out in the sun you are managing you are marking the distances the directions and even if a single uh, distance goes wrong your entire crime scene messes up then you transfer it to the cad you again digitalize it it's an effort so with the scanners you can just place those scanners in a particular area these scanners can relay back the image in a entire 3d form see and if you have very advanced scanners they can actually mark what happened they have like inverted cone patterns in case of explosion here you can easily mark directly like there probably was a body here these are the arms the head everything is easily annotated you can have 3d models too now this is very important thing in anthropology like there are times when in cases of uh, fire the evidences are like pretty fragile so rather than using those evidences you can just scan that let's say skull you can scan that skull a 3d model would be developed you can give a command to print that 3d model and then you can you know study let's say the wound patterns the injuries the bullet injuries and it becomes so easy to understand what might have happened you can reconstruct a skull like if you just scanned the entire part then you can easily go through the different processes to reconstruct just half of the skull into a complete one now just imagine if you can just scan a particular evidence let's say you found a uh body which is in a very decomposed state if possible like you can just scan it and it will convert into a hologram so it would be like pretty interesting to see like a dead body 
is being converted into hologram so you can have an entire crime scene right in front of you next is artificial intelligence which is already being used like especially in cyber security we go through all these things so nowadays like uh, in we have several satellite tracking chips something like this like for the criminals you just tie it around the person so that wherever he moves you can easily identify where the person is moving nowadays these chips are being inserted inside the criminal and you will know like this is something that the criminal can easily remove right but if you insert it inside the body it becomes difficult and then you are able to easily know where the person is moving so i'm moving a little fast now because we are out of time okay then like behavioral patterns like just imagine in dhoom 2 if you remember uh, abhishek bachchan he created an a pattern right to what uh, to identify the next location so with artificial intelligence you can actually create these patterns you do not have to put your brain how it's going to work the artificial intelligence it runs through the different options that are given it has an algorithm it goes through everything and it will give you a pattern of particular behavior similarly it can be used in facial reconstruction you do not have to take the effort to actually uh, put these pins if i am pretty sure none of you might have done facial reconstruction as of now it's a painstaking effort you have to remember some 100 and 150 points on your face you have to put pins then you put clay it's a painstaking effort so you can just scan and run the algorithm and it will directly give you the face now it can be used in anthropology also so do you see like initially we used to use such kind of weighing balances right with time here you had to keep the evidence and then you have to measure it there were a lot of human errors then we moved to these digital scales where you do not have to worry about even understanding what the weight should be it directly gives you the weight so similarly you can use these features like let's say for sex identification you have to understand what kind of bones it is and even then it is very difficult to differentiate between a male and a female bone there are lot of overlapping characters similarly for ancestry estimation stature estimation there are like so many formulas if you have found let's say femur you have to use one of these formula and before you use this formula you have to know the ratio uh the ancestry of a particular person whether male or female and then you use these formula so it's a really painstaking effort then in order to identify age you need to you know study these long bones the distance of these the length of these long bones so all of this is like really uh um, you cannot rely on all these things so what if in coming days in coming future there are some scanners that can directly identify the bones the kind of bones or let's say if you have to identify age you just have to expose this bone to a scanner it can measure the distance or the length of this bone and directly give you that it corresponds to a particular age so it becomes really easy similarly for pathology if you find a bruise and you expose it to a scanner you can easily identify how long the bruise has been there what is the stage of that bruise so it becomes really easy to know what might have happened how the bruise might have occurred now this is something that is happening here quite a lot red pole is an is a software that is being used by police to know where crime can take place in future like the crime has not yet taken place they are already taking measures to know where the crime can take place so they have this software they run that software through algorithm the software understands the locations where the crime takes place where the next crime could take place and it alerts the police where the next occurrence could have been and the police can easily like reach that particular place then we have uh, this happens in chicago like they have a strategic subject list like a location a particular location where a, cr a criminal could be staying so they have an algorithm which can tell you a location a uh, area an area where a particular where the uh, the number of criminals are high 
next is the linguistic fingerprinting it's pretty good like if you guys have read harry potter you know like it's a famous famous book jk rowling also wrote this book the cuckoo's calling under another name robert galbraith so there was a question who had written this book so if we run the book through certain algorithms the algorithm studies the uh, making of sentences how frequently someone uses some words whether they use difficult words or simple words and then they are able to come up with a conclusion that this particular book was actually written by jk rowling similarly you can go you can use algorithms to identify handwritings or signatures rather than you know marking those points understanding it uh, doing all the statistical analysis so this is where artificial intelligence really come into play even in paintings you know if every painter has its own characteristic style in which he or she paints the kind of colors the, a person uses so the algorithm just runs through that particular painting and it will give you a result whether that particular painting was actually made by the original person or is it a fake even in toxicology so uh, you can actually have an app rather than going through all the effort of going through preliminary test the confirmatory test color test gcms everything you can just have an app where you put in the data and you can come to a conclusion so this is an app that was designed by one of my uncles it is used to identify whether a snake is venomous or non venomous so i'll show you how it works it is just a simple screen you just enter you have to enter the age of the victim because lot of metabol uh, the physiological changes that happen because of these toxic compounds they are determined by the age so that is what you enter you enter whether you are a male or a female then they have very basic questions like in case of snakes whether the fangs are single or double how much is the distance between the fangs what are the condition like if there is a local pain present or not is there and some edema lot of questions like almost 20 25 questions are there and at the end you get the output like the species is non venomous and the uh, effect could be severe not severe and the kind of species or the kind of snake that is there so you even come to know the snake that could have caused that particular uh, the infection so this is how it becomes really easy similar you can do for drugs like you can just have an algorithm that can ask you to feed in the data and you can get the name of the drug this is pretty interesting iron sniffers like rather than going through gcms you can just have some iron sniffers kind of thing which you expose the crime scene to they can just zoom into a particular evidence by analyzing the ions that are present in it like if there is a bullet the scanner can identify and on your screen it can just zoom in like this is where that bullet is present this is something that is very interesting and this came out of my day dream when i was thinking what can be done in the future so the biggest problem that we guys have is uh, collection of evidences maintaining custody like it's a task you know every time we analyze the evidences at the end of the day sometimes you just get to hear that uh, the evidence was contaminated stuff like that so how good it would be like you can just scan a particular evidence at a crime scene the scanner identifies the evidence and accordingly it can print a box a collection box a 3d print of the collection box like when you when you have to collect blood you have to make sure whether you have to use those gray gaps or purple gaps depending on the kind of analysis that you have to do i could never understand the concept of those different test tubes like why not have a universal solvent that can you know use uh but can help us to perform all the analysis so there are a lot of technical things in that but still it was such a pain you know so how good it would be you can just scan it a 3d box would come out and for the chain of custody you have fingerprint sensors or facial recognition rather than you know writing your name scanning time date lot of effort so you can have all these things and the entire data will be stored electronically it would be a fun thing next is scent id like every person has its own peculiar smell right 
so how does this scent if is it possible to you know identify this scent to characterize this scent it would become important this is one of the movie inside out it was based on emotions like how your emotions are located in different boxes in our brain conscious memory subconscious memory so just imagine if a person is dead or even if a person is alive if through some technique you can actually extract the memories and play it in the form of a video so it saves us all the time of going through the investigation you can actually see how it occurred so basically the future is going to be a paradise for lazy people like you do not have to do anything you have to just run a particular th thing to algorithms now don't worry this is the last slide so the most important thing for all this development is having proper funding until unless we all have funding the researchers do not have funding we cannot do anything about it these are the movies that i would recommend you guys to watch if you are interested then these are the books that you can read all are very interesting books some are based in future some are completely on psychological for uh, forensics now the last thing that is what i want to leave you guys with if we were talking about 2050 and all the developments do you think that in order to commit a particular crime the person would have to be present there even the criminals will will advance themselves they can also send things through drones so how the forensics will change when the criminal is not even present at a particular crime scene so this is what we need to think about so that is it with this i and the webinar i can take the questions now <coughs> thank you so much ma'am and here it is the time for question and answer session so our first question ma'am if there is any dead body and uh, which is a uh, dead due to the case of poisoning so in that case in the case of uh, means if you'll go for virtual autopsy so is it possible that how we can detect the poison okay so the thing is in cases of virtual autopsies you are able to see the physiological changes that are taking place in the body let's say if there is a change in muscle the toxins that affect the muscles you will be able to see if there is an atrophy to the muscles if those if that particular toxin affects the bones what are the changes in the bones that are taking place so the thing is all these things are not going to replace the original the manual autopsy completely this would be a method to help with the regular autopsy so for toxin analysis you just need a small visceral organ through which you can identify you do not need to cut up the entire body so you can actually have a little blood let's say and you can analyze so that is how you can go about like we are not replacing the regular autopsies completely as of now okay then uh, here is the next question there are so many problems in storage of evidences so uh, like uh, transportation of evidences there are many chances of uh, degradation alteration and destruction right. so what can be done in these cases means is there is any advanced technique yeah that's what i said like the, the last thing that i told you guys how good it would be that a, if you can uh, at, right on the crime scene you can actually create the collection box in a way such that it will preserve the integrity of an evidence like if you're collecting blood automatically you will have the kind of collection box or an envelope that would help the blood to be stable like you do not have to worry about whether it has edt in it or not you can just put in like this is blood and that is and right there you'll have a collection box which can preserve this blood during transportation okay thank you there is another one more question so as we know because of this covid-19 pandemic the okay. sanitization uh, sanitization would be taking place in daily lives okay. so then how we can use the microbes in our forensic study for the future okay i would ask i would like to ask you guys one question whoever asked this question what do you think how long this sanitization will go on like even now people are not even following lockdowns so let's skip the sanitizing sanitization process before this year ends i am pretty sure none of us would be worrying about sanitization anymore this would become a part of us 
even if we are going through sanitization there will be lot of things like even if you are uh, questioning about the microbes thing how much will you sanitize if there is a dead body how many times will you come and sanitize that dead body like once you have sanitized after some time like after a day or two the soil will interact with that dead body and there will be new microorganisms of course that would affect the analysis but still like you will always find some of the other evidences okay and there is one more question do you think that because of advancements in forensics crime will be reduced in the future um uh i think it can go either ways so i'll give you one example just few days back my husband was really frustrated with me so he said that i really want to kill you then my best friend she is like you know do not just kill her like anything because people will obviously suspect you the first thing it's locked down she suggested him like why don't you insert this kind of drug in her because then this drug is not detected in the blood stream she saw this in some random web series that is being shown on netflix so as time like as we go ahead in the future the techniques that we develop that would help us in investigation but the criminals will also develop themselves like you can see it in the movies boom 2 when you look at boom 2 the kind of crime that had taken place in that was completely different as compared to some old movies where the crime was in a very basic stage so even the criminals they develop their techniques it is everything is balanced okay do you have time for one more question now yes yeah so uh, is it virtual autopsy is possible in india of course it's possible why not and i'll tell you something when i had started working uh, one of my colleague like i had worked with one of my colleague i think you guys know amol sir yeah we both had worked and we had written a proposal to actually start virtual autopsies it's very easy you know you just have to have ct scans and mri machines they are present in so many hospitals so if the labs have these two machines they can actually go for virtual autopsies it requires initial investment no doubt but it gives you the returns very easily too it is possible like why not okay so thank you so much ma'am it was very nice session uh, and also i would like to say like i had to rush through uh, the slides in the later part of the presentation if any one of you has a query you can like mail me yeah and i had to oh wait i had to give you the link of that right <coughs> wait let me just uh, type the link <coughs> yeah okay. this is the oh sorry i think i sent yeah this is for the virtual reality thing and there was another video i wanted to show you guys it is how models are converted from 2d to 3d okay okay yeah done okay so now we are at the end of the session now it's a time for vote of thanks gratitude is the most acquisite form of courtesy i am expressing my sincere gratitude towards today's resource person ms shraddha nyati ma'am thank you so much ma'am for your valuable information it was the best use of this time during this lockdown i would like to propose my hearty thanks and gratitude to all the participants of today's webinar thank you for your interest i would like to express our profound gratitude towards our beloved secretary and correspondent line doctor k ratnam sir director ardurai sir principal dr p balaguru swami sir academic director dr n markender sir vice principal professor u natarajan sir deans of various affairs heads of all the departments and each member of administration and management of gtn arts college didical for their valuable supports and guidance i am also thankful to our technical team for their valuable efforts i am also thankful for all the colleagues of gtn institution for their valuable assistance here is an important an announcement those who have registered for this webinar they will get their certificates on their registered mail id within one week time duration only after submitting your feedback again tomorrow on 5th of july 2020 at afternoon 2 pm ist we will be having our next session on the topic why psychology in forensics by resource person dr sumedha jado head department of forensic psychology 
government institute of forensic science aurangabad india thank you so much stay home stay safe thank you krishna thank you gdn yeah. for having me here and have a happy weekend everyone thank you yeah thank you so much